Hello, it's a good morning to all. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, trading session for Tuesday, 27th September 2016. Be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can certainly download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, market reaction this morning, again, it was initially bullish until it turned bearish, okay? Certainly switched very, very quickly. Okay, so let's try and uh, decipher exactly uh, uh, what happened overnight. Okay, so US market certainly sold off uh, overnight initially going into this potential debate uh, with the expectations of a potential Trump victory. Okay, or even yet, um, no, I'm just about to say Yellen, or even um, uh, Miss Clinton uh, certainly called turning out to uh, give a subpar or below par performance and that wasn't the case mr trump looked like a right idiot um a bamboozled baffling a waffling idiot and uh, and really he showed he had no substance uh, no real policy uh, details uh, other than just basically accusing the uh, the opposition of xyz which is really is uh, his whole concept his whole um, pedestal and it's it's beyond me how people are voting for him but that is the case okay so they certainly want change and uh, that type of change really is, is quite toxic but uh, it, that's their problem they, that's their country okay but from my perspective it's certainly he's an idiot okay there's nothing you know really uh, anything else that you can say with regards to that okay so uh, the situation there certainly uh, helped improve the um, the actual peso mexican peso given the fact that uh, his uh, concept is um, building walls uh, divide and uh, certainly uh, <clears throat> not embracing uh, free trade so his protectionist policies are certainly negative for growth now stock markets right in the back of that u.s market certainly uh, an s p hit a pivot high of 2160 the nasdaq hit a pivot high of 4850 before it actually started to reverse it started to reverse in the back of you had number one volkswagen concerns okay uh, potential penalty there and obviously deutsche bank concerns uh, do exist uh, or so are still ongoing so certainly um, certainly not um, not allowing the markets to move higher so uh, we had german inflation as well weaker than expected this morning we had mr draghi dovish yesterday so again a weaker euro should technically have helped the european equities move higher and that hasn't been the case the german dax is down another one percentage point on the back of obviously volkswagen and deutsche bank FTSE 100 down quite substantially as well um FTSE 100 certainly under immense pressure, especially given the fact that it actually gapped up to 6,860, 6,870, and then certainly he paired all those gains as well. Even with the Asian markets being higher, Shanghai 0.6%, the uh, Nikkei up 0.8%, uh, and the Hang Seng up 1.1%. So again, very impressive gains in Asia. Now that, again, like I said, uh, has failed translating to any gains into the European markets. They certainly have been uh, negated or faded to a large extent. Other than that, we had uh, retail sales from Sweden, certainly stronger than expected. So again, helping the risk sentiment trade. Obviously, weaker inflation date from Germany again helps the uh, QE argument. Okay, industrial uh, industrial st sales from uh, Italy uh, certainly better than expected on month to month, but the industrial orders certainly on the weaker side. Okay, private loans in the eurozone uh, certainly came in on on par. Uh, UK CBI date is certainly weak, and now we await for US data PMI. S&P, K. Schiller, uh, Red Book, Consumer Confidence, Richmond Fed, Mr. Fisher as well speaking later on. And uh, we also have the API data at 9.30, which again will be market moving. Okay, folks, that certainly seems to be the scenario at present. Okay, now <clears throat> let's look at the technical picture, given the fact that uh, the markets certainly are flush in the back of uh, uh, weakness in uh, Deutsche Bank and obviously uh, the uh, situation uh, with regards to Volkswagen, certainly a double whammy. Okay, daily chart, the German DAX certainly closed that gap. Very, uh, very impressive. Okay, into gap fill support for now. Okay, so certainly flushed quite substantially. Uh, I did expect the gap fill at 10.390 to hold, but we actually sold another 100 points lower. So, like I said, very impressive. <clears throat> very, very impressive flush on the uh, German DAX. So into gap fill support on the 60 minute chart and the daily chart, uh, oh, certainly bouncing off that gap fill level. Okay, so that gap fill level is quite important now in terms of um, the market itself. In terms of the next resistance zone now on the German DAX, you are looking at uh, previous support equals resistance in this zone here, 10.380. So 
So if we do get a pop on the euro stock, let's just say the DAX here now, 10.380 will be your resistance level to watch out for, folks. So watch out for 10.380 on the um, on the German DAX, okay? In terms of the French CAC, let's just bring up the French CAC for you. Let's go to the daily chart, the French CAC. Certainly a flush here as well into gap fill. Uh, we did have job seekers certainly increasing higher than expected uh, last night. So again, certainly some uh, uh, obviously downside pressure from there. We actually closed the gap and pushed lower on the French CAC. Okay, so into that 4370 support. The next potential gap fill is at 4330. I can't see that uh, closing at present. Okay, but again, this market obviously expect the unexpected as always. Okay. So any pop higher on the French CAC now, you are going to see resistance at 4,400. If we crack through that, then obviously you've got fill above, okay? But again, that, that gap below certainly makes it potentially vulnerable. A 10-minute chart, you are into that support level. Like I said, you've closed the gap now on the French CAC as well. Okay, so certainly looking to pop, fail to hold his key support below. That will now potentially act as resistance at 4,400. So watch out for that resistance zone on the French CAC, okay? In terms of the FTSE 100, let's just bring up the FTSE for you. Okay, so FTSE 100, let's go to the daily chart first and foremost. You are into that 50% now. You do have this key diagonal trend line around the 6780, so that certainly will act as potential support. 60-minute jar is holding support at the uh, 6790 zone. So watch out for 6790. If you crack 6790, the next support really is 6730. So again strong argument for 6790 to hold the 10 minute chart at the moment just about holding on we failed the inverted head and shoulders formation which is a shame okay uh, certainly flushed lower of after that okay so you are looking at previous support equals resistance now around the 6805 then you have 6820 and then the next potential resistance zone is seen up here which is at 6860. So these are the zones that we watch out for in terms of the next move on the uh, the actual uh, FTSE uh, 100. Okay, let's bring up the three Euro stocks now. Last but not least, Euro stocks. Okay, so again we flushed lower than expected. I did expect that gap fill to certainly hold, and even that support zone at 2975 to hold. None, none of those certainly occurred. Even gap fill at 2980 failed to hold. Okay. So for now, you do have gap fill, okay? Gap fill support, certainly holding. Look at 60-minute chart. You certainly have horizontal support here as well. If the market continues to flush, the next potential support is seen at 2935. Very hard to envisage that, but that certainly is the uh, scenario and the situation at present in terms of the uh, next move on the euro stocks. Okay, folks? Right, I think that's a wrap then in terms of... Uh, in terms of price action, uh, in terms of price action, again, like I said, I am looking for a potential pop on the FTSE, looking for a pop on the European stocks as well, so looking for a move higher, given the bearish arguments certainly have all been factored in uh, at this junction. Now, the German DAX, like I said, jumping and popping off the gap fill support. We're down almost uh, from 10,600 down to uh, 10,280 uh, now. So that's so quite a substantial drop, okay? So it's almost a three... Uh, five to six hundred point drop so uh, Jim and Dak certainly factored in the um, the bearish news now also bear in mind that you had Mr Draghi was dovish yesterday German inflation weaker this morning and stronger IFO data yesterday so again everything is de generally indicating a potential bullish bias what we need to shake off to Volkswagen and Deutsche Bank concerns on that note please be sure to visit cfds.com for your training needs and take advantage of that bonus goodbye now.